ein Volk sein und ihr, meine Jugend, Wiedersehen, my love, the time has come to part. I'll wiedersehen, my love, with you there goes my heart. You love me tenderly, your love was warm and true. But fate has deemed that we would be alone and blue. Bless you and thank you for loving me all the while. The dawn that comes and goes will leave me with a smile. Bless you and thank you. Bless you and thank you. Bless you and thank you. Yes? I believe I have an appointment with Mr. Henderson. They sent a woman. Yes. And they have a Jew opening the door. So which one of us is the real winner? How do you know I'm Jewish? Please. We Germans can smell a Jew from kilometers away. You don't like a Jew opening the door for you? Oh, I don't like a Jew doing anything for me or with me. In front of me, behind me, above me or below me. In that case, I have one piece of advice for you. Uh, uh, uh. I don't take advice from Jews either. Wouldn't it then be much better for you to go back where you're from? Oh, that's right. Yes, America is the land where some Jews enjoy some very powerful positions, don't they? That's right. A land where responsibility and respect are accorded by birth regardless of religion. But not regardless of race, right? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> you have nothing to say to that. And the man you work for? He is not Jewish, correct? No, he is not. A Jew being a servant to a non-Jew in America. What is the matter with you? Are you retarded? I'm not a servant. I am Mr. Henderson, assistant and advisor. Oh. Yes, that's better. The Jew behind the scenes. The power behind the power. You'll find that Mr. Henderson is very much his own man. But the Jew is always whispering in his ear. As much as I would adore to chatting with you, it's uh, Mr. Henderson's strict policy that everyone who sees him thoroughly searched. Since we didn't know they were going to send us a woman, we haven't arranged for a woman to come search you. So, you'll either wait here till we can arrange for a woman to come search you, or we can make another appointment for you. You don't really expect me to sit here and wait for God knows how long while you go fetch a woman from God knows where to come and search me, do you? It's either way to come another day. Those are the only two choices. Well, what about you? Can't you search me? You would let Jewish hands pour you, buddy? Rather than wait one hour or two? Something I would say for the Jewish people. They are clean people. So yes, I will allow you to pour me this one time. 
considering this meeting is of extreme importance. But you know, Jews are big talkers. Suppose I blow. <laughs> and who would believe you that the personal emissary of Adolf Hitler, a pure Aryan woman, would allow a Jew to touch her? I suppose you're right about that. Well then, it'll just have to be our other secret. So you will do it. How could I pass up the chance to put my hands on Hitler's personal emissary and the pure Aryan woman to boot? Good. So we will both have a novel and unexpected experience. Something to tell my grandchildren. Would you be please kind enough to raise your arms above your head and spread your legs? What? While I'm standing? I know it's a unique request for you, but just for this occasion. I see you're not only a Jew, but something of a fresh mouth also. Alas, we all need something to keep our spirits up. Did I hurt you? No. No. I'm very sensitive. Since I'm not wearing a brazier today, I hope that lifts your spirits even further. May I say, madam, that you have extraordinary, beautiful Aryan breasts? Yes, I know. Something else I must say for the Jews. They do have an extraordinarily light touch. Did I hurt you again? No. No, I told you. I'm very sensitive. It appears you ran into my Gretel. Gretel? Yes. You see, I didn't wear panties today because I wanted Gretel to be able to breathe some of your democratic American air. Though she feels quite refreshed, especially in this summer heat. And you, oh, you do have such a light touch. Gretel is grateful. Well, then I'll have to wait for the search. Mm. If I may check your purse now. Mm. For great, I presume. Yes. In case she gets lucky, or in case it happens to be that time of the month, you never know with Gretel. Yes, of course. Gretels will be Gretels. Mm -hmm. I'll take this letter into Mr. Henderson and he'll be with you shortly. In the meantime, you can go in and sit down, or walk around, and look at the pictures. Whatever you wish. Well, I'm... I'm Oprah. Mr. Martin Henderson. I'm... 
so glad my assistant David was provident enough to warn me about the vision I was going to encounter, thus defending without success my vulnerable heart from an inevitable overload. Mr. Henderson, your success with the women is known throughout the world. I am privileged to be among that cast of smitten women. Ah, you know, a tale told over and over expands with the telling. Would you care for some refreshment? I will imbibe whatever you set before me. Well, that in and of itself is wonderful news. Call me Martin, please. Martin, then. And you must call me Liesel. Liesel. Beautiful name for a beautiful young woman. Dear, fix us two vodka tonics, no ice. Yes, Mr. Henderson. Please, have a seat. Thank you. I must say, Martin, that I am still trying to catch my breath from finding myself in the presence of the man who, in America, pulls so many strings. Well, that's, that's very kind of you, but you see, I'm no more than an ordinary citizen trying to do my best for his country and the world whenever given the opportunity. If you wish to wrap yourself in papier mache, Martin, be my guest. As long as we both know what the real situation is. Well, I see we have a straight shooter here. <laughs> Lisa, shall we take our gloves off? Are you, are you really? trying to catch your breath because you're so awed by my presence because you strike me as a woman who's not only never awed by a man's presence but who's fully aware that she has every man in her pocket and that that man does not have in his pocket the proverbial gun but is very, very glad to see you. Well, to tell you the truth, Martin, I'm not much fonder of gloves than I am of wearing socks to bed or condoms. Not to mention the practice of wasting time. And while I am still quite young and have plenty of time to waste, you are not in that position, are you? Oh. Well, well, I see it would appear that we've not only taken our gloves off, but we've, we've put a few stones in our fists. Not necessarily. I happen to like older men. They bring lots of valuable experience to the table and to <laughs> other areas as well. <laughs> Either way, no matter how little inherent seriousness this meeting portends. The experience is, oh, more than worthwhile. Not often I meet a woman who is so forthright, sure, and to the point, not to mention alarmingly charming. That is because the men who have directed the play script of the world have cast the women as mice. Shame on the men. For me, women are, always have been, always will be. Oh, so much more than mice. Yes. To you, they have been succulent chickens, which I hear you eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But chickens, are not much less mousy than mice, are they? How well 
Do you know me? Did you think you could talk like that? Did you not but a second ago say that this meeting you and I are having pertains little inherent seriousness? I believe I did say that. Then an emissary is sent to America by Germany's supreme leader, Adolf Hitler. What possible reason could anyone have for labeling such a meeting as pertaining little inherent seriousness unless that emissary happens to be a woman? The reason isn't what you think it is. Well, I would be extremely eager to hear you characterize your reasons. In this world of ours, you have two states of existence, war and peace. War is destruction and death. Peace is life and creativeness. Men, the creatures of war. Women, the creatures a peace. Adolf, Adolf, sending you on this mission of negotiating, I don't know what, but I do know Adolf. So I know it has to do with war. And thereby, it belongs to the men. Sending a woman on such a mission can't be taken serious. I see now why you have been so successful with the women. You could probably talk Joan of Arc into bed and enter her from the rear to boot, if hmm. you pardon the expression. You know, personally, I think uh, Joan of Arc was a lesbian, so I don't think I'd want to enter her from any position. Why don't you tell me instead, if you don't think I'm right, truthfully though, about women being kept away from warlike activities? A seemingly brilliant reasonable, yet devious as your theory might be, you are not correct. Because what I bring to you is an offer that is simple, straightforward, and has a lot of gain for both you Americans and us Germans. There are no compromises in this offer I bring to you. There is only gain for both sides. It's what you Americans might call a win-win proposition. I repeat, a win-win proposition. Well, thank you, David. You see, David, she's refusing my rose. Could you, could you try giving it to her on my behalf? Well, Stanley, here's another fine mess you've gotten me into. Jai, my father. Say good night, Gracie. Good night, Gracie. I think I wandered into a Marx Brothers den. You see it? Auf Wiedersehen, Lady Marlene. Underneath the lamppost, by the barracks gate, 
Standing all alone every night till she awakes. She waits for a boy who's gone away. And though he's gone, you'll hear him say, Malili of the lamplight, my sweet Lily Marlin. Will you exchange glasses with me? You want to exchange glasses with me? Yeah, mein Herr. You think we put something in your drink? Perhaps not you, but your servant, without a doubt. If you're talking about David, he's not my servant. He's my assistant and advisor. A rose by any other name. Mm -hmm. why, why do you think David put something in your drink? Because he's a Jew. And the Jews poison those whom they fear and hate. And they fear and hate everyone, especially us Germans. I'm, I'm not aware the Jews are partial to poison or that they fear and hate everyone. That is because you Americans know much less about the, German, about the Jews than we Germans do. Hmm. Mm -hmm. There was a nice little slip there. Thank you. <laughs> well, all right, Liesl. Uh, just to show you how mistaken you are, I'll be happy to change glasses with you. Your glass, and I put it here on my side, and here's my glass, and I put it on your side, and check. Do you think we Germans are fools? This is precisely what you expected me to do, to exchange glasses with you. But you see, we Germans don't fall for your cheap American tricks. So, I will take my glass back. Checkmate. Hmm. Now we will toast. By all means. What shall we toast? To getting to know each other better. I couldn't make up a better toast than that. You didn't drink. Do you think I am a fool? Now that you have drunk from that glass, I know that is the one without the poison in it. So, I will take that glass, and now I will drink. You know, you, you drank from the glass that my lips touched. That would make us kissing cousins. Did you know that? How interesting. Now you drink from that glass. Laheim. Oh, you drink from that glass as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. perhaps your servant didn't put anything in either of these drinks. Pity. Better luck next time. <laughs> ah, Liesel, Liesel, Liesel. What am I to do with you? Tell me, how did Adolf Hitler come to give a beautiful young woman such a responsibility as emissary to the United States with, a, with an offer to negotiate something presumably serious. Well, I very much would dislike to disappoint you, Martin, but the truth is my story is quite boring and simple. You see. As you may have heard, the Führer is very fond of the movies. Sometimes in the evenings, he will have a film displayed in one of his private theaters with all of the usual suspects. 
Goebbels, Himmler, Göring. Sometimes some of the generals. And of course, his Frau, Eva. Now Hitler likes this evening of the meetings. He enjoys it more with an audience. And of course, everyone else enjoys this activity as well. Now, sometimes, the Führer will see an actress in these films who appeals to him. And he has someone whose sole responsibility it is to set up a meeting between the Führer and these actresses. Now, of course, Frau Eva knows nothing of this. And, except for the people directly involved, neither does anyone else. Hmm. <laughs> well, so far, it seems no different than what goes on with any man who has any kind of power in any country. I told you, you would be disappointed. I'm not disappointed. I like hearing your story. I like to listen to you speak about your lips, your eyes, clear like blue stars twinkling, movements of your body. I think you will make me blush. My story is that such arrangements to meet the Führer were made. And during our meeting, the Führer found talents in me. He felt went beyond the usual ones. And as you must know, the Führer's instincts are infallible. And as you must know, my dear young lady, any man's infallible instinct is infallibly guided by his infallible protrusion. Are you upset with me? With all due respect to your experience, Martin, the Führer's characteristics can never be compared to those of any other man. That is not an opinion, it is a fact. The fact is, I don't think we would get very far arguing about that subject. So let me let me reiterate. My infallible principle is to infallibly never negotiate warlike matters with a woman. End of story. But if I made you an ironclad proposition that the negotiation you conduct with me will not only be the most successful negotiation you ever conduct, but it will also be the most enjoyable and pleasurable. Would you say Iron clad. Where's the iron in this clad? If you negotiate with me, I will put myself at your disposal, including not returning to Germany, but staying here as your, shall we say, placing. Your family in Germany? I do. I have a mother and a father aunts, uncles, cousins, brothers, a sister, and we are all very close. Plus you're a successful actress and a favorite of the chancellors. You abandon all that to come live in the United States at my disposal? If I give you my word, that is what I will do. Why would you sacrifice so much for negotiation? A successful negotiation. Of course. The Führer has given me an assignment 
because he has faith that I will carry it out. That makes me determined to succeed at any cost and to be perfectly honest. The sacrifice on my part of remaining here in America is only temporary. You see, at this precise moment, we are in the process of conquering Europe. There is no doubt that we will soon declare war on you Americans, and when we do, we will conquer you as well. And then, when I am finally liberated, I will be even more beloved by the Führer and my country than I am now. You would, you would achieve the proposition you were talking about. The win-win proposition. As you Americans put it, bingo. How could anyone possibly resist that? So you will break your principle and negotiate with me? Please don't. I will break my principle and negotiate with you. And may God help me. <laughs> you see, if you had the Führer on your side, you wouldn't need God's help. And I, in turn, promise that my proposal will be simple, straightforward. So there is no, um, uh, how you Americans say, uh, um, no the beating around the bush. About the bush. Beating about the bush. You see, it's the three B words following one another. Beating about the bush. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah? Beating about the bush. Yeah. Thank you. I like to be corrected. We Germans like everything to be perfect. Now, there only remains the matter of the physical arrangements of our negotiation. Physical arrangements? Yes. Where we sit, how we sit. Things of that nature. Now we're going to... It's simple we sit and say what we say. We Germans like to control everything to make for optimum success. There won't be much changing around, I promise. Only a few touches here and there and we will have optimum conditions. Now, will you entrust me these physical arrangements? I will and trust you with my most precious jewels. Setzen Sie sich bitte. And I promise I will take the utmost care of your jewels. Now, Everything I do if, is with the idea of making it um, better in every way. So, do I have your permission to open your belt in the top button of your trousers? I am your prisoner. Good. There. Just so everything is nice and loose the way it ought to be. And then I will pull down the zipper of your trousers a little bit so everything can breathe. How is that? Lizzo, I am beginning to like the way this negotiation is going. As your Jimmy Durante would say, you ain't seen nothing yet. I like Jimmy Durante. I do too. I like his big nose. Now, let us take Hansel out for some air, yeah? Hansel? Mm. Mm. Hansel. 
of the famous duo Hansel und Gretel? Oh, don't worry. No one is going to hurt you. At least no more than you will enjoy. There we go. There you see. Doesn't that air feel good on Hansel? Well, he likes a little air sometimes, don't you, Hansel? But, but he's really partial to close, tight, warm, human places. Preferably, mm, dripping wet. Don't worry. I know what Hansel likes. Now, let us get Hansel to straighten up a bit, yeah? He looks a little droopy today. So, there we go. You see? You see how straight Hansel stands up now? Like a good little soldier? And now, let us put your shoulders back. So you too are like a good little soldier. Or shall I say a big little soldier? Like your Uncle Milty was, yeah? And now, let us open the top button of your shirt so everything oh. is loose. <gasps> Martin? Oh, I am so sorry. In lowering myself to open your button, I seem to have caused Gretel to swallow your Hansel. I shall have Gretel disgorge immediately. Oh. So what do you think of my physical arrangements for our negotiation? Is this the position in which we're going to negotiate? Oh, well, there will be some periodic movement, of course. Like this. Little by little, my dear Martin. A little movement. And then some negotiation. And then, a little more movement. And then some more negotiation. Then a little more movement. A little more negotiation. Then, perhaps a little shimmy. Like my sister Kate. And then, some deep sea diving. Down by the border, down Mexico Bay. Do you get the picture, Martin? I not only get the picture, I would be very surprised if I didn't get heart seizures. <gasps> nein, 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 nein. There will be no heart seizures. I will control this very carefully. Do you see? Do you see how careful I am being, Martin? Mm. There will be pleasure and joy and no heart seizures. Do you see, Martin? I see. I no longer care if I have heart seizure or not, as long as you don't stop moving. All right. We can move a little while we negotiate. And I will only stop when you give me the signal that you are about to explode. And then I will wait for as long as it takes and I will only resume movement when you tell me the feeling has passed. What do you say, Martin? That's thumbs up, Lisa. We are going to use our thumbs? That's new to me. <laughs> no, that's that's a figure of speech, some expression. It means okay. Move ahead. Thumbs up. Yes. Yes. Thumbs up. Yes. And other things as well. Everything is up. Up here. Liesel and Martin making love with their eyes. Their words their fingers, and down there, Hansel and Gretel luxuriating inside one another, drowning in pleasure. Now, one thing I must ask you to promise me, Martin. Yeah, because I want you to listen carefully. 
If you feel like you are about to explode, you must give me the signal to stop. Otherwise, the whole deal is off. The explosion cannot happen until after the negotiation is complete. Do you understand? Yes. Yes. Only please resume the movement. You are keeping your promise. Mama is proud of you. Push the feeling of the explosion away, yeah? How are you doing? Are you pushing the feeling away? With great difficulty, Lisa. With great difficulty. So long as you are successful. After all, we do want this to be as long and as pleasurable as possible, don't we, Marty? Perhaps forever? What do you say to that? I say, bless you and, and thank, thank you for loving me all the while. The dawns that come and go, they greet me with a smile. Bless you and thank you. Bless you. And thank you, bless you, and thank you. What do you say, Martin? Can I move again? Not a moment too soon. So, Mr. Henderson, the negotiation begins. We currently have one and a half million Jews in concentration camps in Germany, and we are willing to sell them to you for $60 million. Ten million dollars of which we will give you personally after you have made the arrangements. You stop moving. Yes, because I want you to be free to concentrate on my offer. What if I say no to your offer? Why would you say no to my offer? Why would you stop moving? We are talking, yeah? Didn't you say we could talk and move at the same time? When I hear negativity, it upsets me and I cannot move. You cannot move? No, not when I have to concentrate. No. Can't you concentrate and move at the same time? Not when I have to concentrate hard! Ah. Now, why would you say no to my offer? I didn't say I would say no to your offer. But do you really think the American government is going to spend $60 million to save the Jews? That is the thing. The American government doesn't have to shell out a panic for those Jews. Wait. You asked us for $60 million. Now you're telling me we don't have to spend a penny. How does that work? The Jewish organizations will fall over themselves to raise the money. You could probably make it so they raise a few extra million, which the State Department can keep as surcharge, and you still get $10 million after you have made the arrangement. You're probably right about the Jewish organizations. They'd be happy to save, to raise the money. Yeah, something to say for the Jewish people. They help one another. Not many others do. Ah, that is a horse of a different color. Is this horse something worth considering? I would say, of a yeah, my liebe Dame. You see, when I don't have to concentrate, I feel like moving again. Ah, so that's the secret to not make you concentrate. That's the secret. Heart! Ah, not yes. concentrate. Heart! Yes, of course. Heart. Yes, that is the secret. As you might say, a sure fire secret. And you know what? Here is some more good news. After we have sold you those Jews, we will have put many more of them in concentration camps and then we can negotiate selling you those. Hmm? Hmm. Tell me, I think you like the way I negotiate. 
Nein, Martin. Nein. I am nuts about the, the way no, you negotiate. Hmm. And of course, after we have sold you all of the juice we have, I will make good on my word and come back here to be at your disposal. Question. Hmm? How long do I have to give you an answer on your proposal? I thought you had accepted my proposal, that it was settled. He stopped moving, so I'm guessing you're concentrating again. Hard! Concentrating hard! Uh, yes, of course, hard. Well, here uh, is something I thought was one, two, three, and now you ask me how long you have to accept my offer. Who wouldn't be concentrating? Hard. Yes, hard! Uh, you know, Lizzo, I, I don't hold an official position. I am an unofficial advisor to the president, and I have contacts here and there. But I can't give you an answer till I talk to the President and the Secretary of State. But that is just a formality, yes. There shouldn't be a problem after they have been told the situation, nein? Well, no, 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 there shouldn't be a problem once, uh, once we talk and you know, they decide to act. Okay. In that case, I understand about formalities. Yes, I see you understand. Mm -hmm. But of course I understand. After all, I am German. <laughs> ah, you certainly are. You have four days to accept my proposal. You always see each other while we wait. No, nothing can happen while we wait. I will be concentrating hard. And once all of the papers are signed, I will come straight here with a bottle of champagne and we will celebrate like this. Alles gut. Alles gut. Well, I had better put these on. If I want to sit anywhere without leaving a great big swimming pool. Now, Martin, of course, if you have an answer before the four days are up, I will come straight here and we will celebrate sooner. And then maybe I can take you with me to Germany. Yes, and I will introduce you to the Führer and all of his puppets. Oh, they are really quite amusing. And we will celebrate the entire time in Germany and on the ship to Germany. Won't Adolf mind you celebrating with someone else? He doesn't have to know everything. When two people want to see each other, there is little anyone can do to stop them. That is why, throughout all of the ages, there have always been so many babies. Is, uh... Is it safe for me in Germany? It will be wunderbar for you in Germany. So long as you're not a Jew. Okay, and now I must go. I'll uh, see you to the door. Oh, 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 don't you want to put your little Hansen back in his candy cottage? Oh, oh yes. 
<laughs> Although I, I would much rather put him somewhere else. All right, oh, this is a good sign. Yes. Oh, we will have a wonderful time in Germany and on the ship to Germany. And when you come back to the United States to be my plaything. Yes. Unless you get tired of me. Lizzo, how could anyone ever get tired of me? Martin, I was being facetious. Did you ever hear the story of the man and the woman who were, who were in the throes of making love? And you mean fucking? Yes, fucking. Mm -hmm. And they were going at it hot and heavy. Oh, you may in the way you and I were, not too long ago. Yes, just like that. Mm -hmm. Perhaps not in a chair, but uh, just like that. Mm -hmm. Can I go on with the story? Oh, I'm so sorry, Martin. You were saying they were going at it hot and heavy. Yes, and all this time he's trying to kiss her. While they were fucking? <laughs> yes, while they were fucking. And uh, he's, uh, he's reaching for her and reaching around to her and trying to kiss her. And she's avoiding him and avoiding him and avoiding him. Finally, he says, why won't you let me kiss you? And she says, are you crazy? We shouldn't even be doing this. <laughs> oh, Martin. But you didn't try to kiss me, did you? Mm. No, no, I, I, I thought, considering the circumstances, it wouldn't be seemly for me to do that. I guess that was part of my job description. How fortunate I love my job. More than fortunate. It was a very sad story, Martin. And now, Auf Wiedersehen, my love. Bless you and thank you. Bless you. And thank you, bless you, and thank you, bless you, and thank you. Now, in the land, my love, the time has come to part. Auf Wiedersehen, my love. With you there goes my heart. <laughs> Something extraordinary must have happened. Because I've never seen you dancing, especially by yourself. David, I have, as you know, had many women in my life. But nothing, nothing has been quite like this. With all due respect, my dear Martin, I have heard you utter that very phrase a number of times before. And it's always been true. Always. But this, this time is really special. All right. A million and a half Jews. This is a miracle, Martin. A miracle right out of the Bible. You listen. I'll listen to make sure you're right. You know. Huh. You search, sir. And you didn't find anything. Uh, would you think she was going to pick up a chair and bop me upside the head? Listen, anything can happen. I watch over you like a hawk. 
and what she was doing with that woman, a heart seizure was a real possibility. Uh, uh, and you do have heart arrhythmia, you know uh, that. Uh, so you, you thought that that little item uh, slipped my mind? Eat an apple every day, <laughs> go to bed by three, take good care of yourself, you belong to me. This is very good. Very Thank good. you. But you, you have to remember, David, that in Washington, when you sing, you belong to me, it takes on completely different meaning. Oh. <laughs> oh. All right, all right. I feel for you. And I uh, wish over you like a son wished over his father. So what's wrong with that? Nothing, Dave. Not a thing. There should be more of that in the world. How can that be with that devil in Germany threatening to decimate all of our people? Uh, sooner or later, we'll deal with that devil in Germany. From your mouth into God's ears. So, how soon can we get a million and a half people out of there? It's a touchy subject. Why is it touchy? Even the German whores say the Jewish organizations will raise the money in a minute. Please don't call her a whore, David. Why not? She fucks Hitler. Then she comes here and fucks you. And God knows how many other people she fucks every time she wants something. I'm telling you not to call her a whore. Fine. Fine. As she herself said it, a rose by any other name. So why is the subject of saving a million and a half people at no expense to the government a touchy subject? Take my word. Touchy subject. Listen, this is not something you can just toss off and say I'm not going to go into it. These are my brothers and sisters over there. They are in a concentration camp. And I'm not going to be pushed aside like this is none of my business. I'm not going to go into it with you right now, David. She's given you four days to deliver an answer. And you're not going to tell me right now what that answer is going to be? No, Martin. No. It is not acceptable. Are you questioning my decisions now? I'm questioning this decision. There are a million and a half people out of there who are going to die. If you don't do what any human being should do in such circumstance without hesitation. But you're playing footsie with your I can't go into it with you now. And it's starting to smell like something rotten in Denmark in all the fucking world. So it damn right, I am questioning. David. I I know how you feel. I feel the same way. But there are a lot of Americans who don't feel that way. They don't want another million and a half Jews coming into this country under any circumstances. Do you understand? Well, fuck them! Fuck anybody who would condemn to death, even one innocent person, because they don't want his kind in their country. Let alone a million and a half men, women and children who are sure to be tortured and killed unless you bring them here. You've got the presidents here, and the president could do this without question. He could do it, no matter how many millions of Americans disapprove. Or oh, his wife Eleanor would be behind it, hundred and ten percent. And I'm telling you right now, if you don't do this, Martin, I'm going to go to my people and tell them what's happening. And if you don't think when that news comes out, there'll be a shitstorm all over the world for what America's doing. And if you don't think this will be the most shameful act any nation has ever committed, you've got another thing coming. So I'm telling you right now, Martin. Either you promise me you will arrange this with the president, or I go out and notify the Jewish organizations as to what's been done. And when the Jews of this country get through with you and the president, the president can forget about another term. And the influence yourself have wielded all these years will turn to shit. And you will burn in hell before an innocent person ever talks to you again. David, I must have been blind not to see it. 
not seeing the forest for the trees. Mm. You've been in politics too long. Those people must be saved without question. How could I have ever considered otherwise? I'll see the president and the secretary of state and we'll get it done. Mm. Takes a long time to grow up sometimes. I was blind and now I see. Yeah. 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 All right. This afternoon, I'll call the White House and make an appointment for me with the president. But before that, you and I are going to celebrate. You remember that 100-year-old Napoleon brandy I have in my private stuff? Oh, yeah. Man, we're going we're gonna to break that bottle open and drink to my finally seeing the light and <laughs> seeing the light and shedding these miserable rags of politics. I'll get the bottle. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Sit, no, come here, come here. Sit down, sit down, sit down, no. You sit down. David, I am going to, I'm going to wait on you uh, as a token symbol of my repentance and rebirth. You just sit here and relax, and I'll serve you. Listen, I don't have much time, but I want to tell you this so we can get things going. A miracle is about to take place. We have the opportunity to save the lives of a million and a half Jews in German concentration camps. And if things go well, we'll be able to save as many as five or six million in the years to come. I can't talk anymore right now, but that deal is going to go through and we have to move and move fast. I'll tell you more tonight when I see you. I don't think I'll ever be able to look at this chair without goosebumps sprouting out all over my terra incognita. <sighs> I don't think I'll ever be able to look at that chair, period, except pointing it out to the maid so she can disinfect it. Don't say that. Don't say that. However, as one of our landsmen, Hollywood producer Irving Thalberg said, all is forgiven if the footage is good. Think of it. Among the Jews, there is so much talent, so much intelligence, so much genius. Albert Einstein, Sigmund Freud, Thomas Mann, so many could go on and on. And think of how many individuals like that will be among the millions we're going to save. You are going to save, Martin. 
good thing to drink to all those who are going to be saved. If you'll forgive my taking the liberty, Martin, I've already called one of my people to begin preparations in raising the money. You know my policy about revealing anything regarding ongoing negotiations. Forgive me, Martin, but time is of the essence. And I just wanted to get things started as soon as possible. Yeah. You have the idea now I've yielded to you on this matter that you can undermine my work whenever you feel like it? Please, Martin, I beg you. Don't talk like that. And don't even think like that. No one is going to give away any secrets. This is just a question of administrative work. Organizing a list of people who will contribute dates and place where functions will take place. Nothing of that will show the nature of any of this. Get off your knees and sit on that chair, like a person. Not till you forgive me. Get off your knees and sit on that chair like a person. What exactly did you tell him? Him. I told just one person. Him? I told just one person. And you don't think that one is not going to tell 20 others? And those 20 aren't going to do the same? What did you tell him specifically? Just that we have the opportunity to save many Jews in Europe and to get things going in regards to raising money. That's unforgivable. That's unforgivable. Within less than a week, every Jew in this country is going to know about this and their relatives in Europe too. Forgive me, Martin. I promise you, my people. What are you shaking your head for? I don't know, something with my eyes. Your eyes? Yeah. Things that are supposed to be still are moving. And things that are moving aren't where they're supposed to be. Something is wrong. Something is very wrong here. No, David. It was wrong, but it's not wrong anymore. Your mistake was in listening to my conversation with Liesl. Mine was in trusting you too much, thinking that because you were like the son I never had, to be loyal to a country as I am. It turns out you're no more, no less than a Jew. And for that, you're going to be with us no more than another few minutes. What did you do, Martin? You're like my son. And I poisoned you. people are not going to know anything. When you disappear, any credibility there might have been 
to whatever story you gave that person with whom you spoke will disappear right along with you. I won't know a thing about it. What could you do this, Marjorie? What was impossible for you to understand. And that's only because you're a Jew. Is that the State Department and the most powerful individuals in the country are not Jews. They're anti-Jews. Henry Ford, Joe Kennedy, Henry Luce, Charles Lindbergh, many others, who would do whatever they could to help Hitler kill Jews rather than save them. And if there were any serious effort in trying to bring Jews into this country, lots of Jews, and the president signed off on it, he wouldn't get reelected if he were Jesus Christ. America was never going to flood this land with Jews. I'll tell you something else. That'll be the last story you ever hear. When my parents and I came to this country, I was six years old. On Ellis Island, where the immigrants officially entered the country, these clerks gave the immigrants identification papers that were based on the old papers the immigrants brought from the old country. Problem is, Americans have never done well with foreign names. So these clerks often gave the immigrants an American version of their name. And these names then became their official names. I was, uh, our family name was, was <laughs> Hendelsman. And they gave us Henderson, a fine American name. Later on, my father thought it was a good idea. I was Morris. And I became Martin. You see, David, I'm a full-blooded Jew, and the only person in the world who knows it is you.
Auf Wiedersehen, my love, the time has come to part. Auf Wiedersehen, my love, with you there goes my heart. You loved me tenderly, your love was warm and true. But fate has deemed that we would be alone and blue. Bless you and thank you for loving me all the while. The dawn that comes and goes will leave me with a smile. Bless you and thank you. Bless you and thank you. Bless you and thank you. Bless you